due to the fact that we had a couple missteps with issues with the server and all that, I want to make sure we're, we're all on the same page of what it is we're required to do for lab 7. Also due to the fact that I posted lab 7 without an explanation uh, at first. And then today's, the rest of today will be a work day, so we'll have about a 5-10 minute lecture just to go over it and, and then we'll have um, a work day. Remember, we are interested in, thank you, we are interested in doing server-side geolocation. And if you remember, that by definition is going to be less accurate than client-side because that's going to be based on the IP address that comes as part of the request. So with the request comes the URL that you're asking for, any form data, and a whole package of other stuff, the platform, the browser you're using, and so on. One of the things is the IP address. Typically that IP address is assigned to your internet service provider who's sort of your gateway to the internet. All right, and there's a big table somewhere. Big table of IP addresses that get assigned to internet service providers. So, I connect, make it to the server. The server can look up this IP address and come back with some info. about where you're located. Then, as with any sort of server-side scripting, that info about you and where you're located can be then taken by the server and a script can be used to, based on that information, create a custom HTML page regardless of the location and that gets delivered back to the client. All right? This is on the server side. This is not specifically a mobile concept. All right? This is just web development. So um, this example isn't specifically related to the mobile. It's just a basic um, web development concept. So the request includes an IP address. The server can take that IP address, look it up, get some information about the location, and then the scripts can use that location to generate an HTML page custom to that. And we see that in the case of Google um, customizing your search results based on where you are located. All right? Now, your assignment is to create PHP pages. It needs to be PHP, right? Because it's going to be dynamic, not static. So we need to use server-side scripting to based on the location of where the person is, customize the page. All right. And the example I gave, one of the examples was for basketball. Um, if you were in Illinois, it showed you information about the Chicago Bulls. If you were in Georgia, it showed you information about the Atlanta Hawks. Otherwise, it showed some default information. And your pages should also have some sort of default information. So in other words, you know, you're not going to literally code every single location, but you might pick a few locations to test. And if it's not one of those locations, you should, um, you should uh, have some sort of default. Like what I did, I just showed a picture of a basketball and had the link to the NBA site. Now, a couple things that we're going to use for this to work. For this to work, this connection truly has to go through the Internet. It can't go through like the internal network here, all right? So therefore, we have to put this, or it can't work on your test environment. It really has to be your machine out in the internet. So we have our CIS SQL server, which we talked about um, FTPing our code up to there. You'll develop your PHP code 
and you'll FTP it up to our server. And then you can access it anywhere. Now, chances are that, you know, unless you want to drive around to different places geographically, you're limited to where you're testing, right? You're, you're going to be in this general vicinity. So therefore, we can use a proxy server. And what a proxy server does is it effectively it changes your request. So you don't make a request directly to the web server. Your request goes to the proxy server. The proxy server then makes a request to the server, takes the results, and sends it back to you. What's the implication of that? The implication of that is, the, from the server's perspective, it's going to get the proxy server's IP address, not your IP address. So that's how here, sitting in Elyria, Ohio, I can test that basketball one. If I find a proxy server for Illinois, I can go and test my basketball example, and my server, my code on CIS SQL, is going to think the request came from Chicago. All right? It was funny, uh, when I was doing this last year, Mike Harmich, because every once in a while there's like hacker attacks on the servers and all that. Well, Mike Harmich says, you know, we got requests from France, and, and it's like, oh, I was just playing with the proxy server testing the code. And it's like, oh, okay. All right, he's looking at the server logs. But that's the role of the proxy server in this, to really test our, our geolocation. Remember, this geolocation done on the server side is broad. All right? It's not going to pinpoint you to an exact location. It's going to know approximately where you are based on your ISP or, in this case, a proxy server. Now, fortunately, you don't have to write the code that does this piece. That looks up in the big table O IP addresses and returns back information. What tool are we going to use for that? The Geo plugin, right? The Geo plugin, there is PHP code. You can put it in an include file and include it on all your pages if you're doing a larger site. And what it does is it gives you the ability to create an object, a Geo plugin object, and populate that object based on the IP address of the client's. Um, which maps to the client's location. When we do that, we have a lot of information in the GL plugin. We have, um, you know, we saw we had city, state, country, we had the currency that they use, and, and so on. We have a currency exchange rate of what they use, which is kind of slick. So, your job is to write some server-side script that depends on the location. And again, you'll be using the proxy servers. Do tell me which proxy servers you use, or at the very least, where, where those proxy servers were located so I can replicate it. All right? Have any of you given thought about what you're going to do with this? I think you mentioned. Yeah, I'm gonna, I pretty much already finished mine. It's Okay, tourist attraction. In other words, depending on where you are, it will show you a list of different stuff. Now, keep in mind that, you know, you can take this to the nth degree, all right? Because we're writing server-side scripting and our code is writing the HTML, we're not writing the HTML, we could change every aspect of the page. We could give different colors depending on the location it was. We could give different HTML content depending on where it is. We could um, organize the page. You know, some cultures read, you know, typical European, American and European cultures read from left to right. There's other cultures that go from right to left. You could look to see if it was in one of those places where the orientation and reverse it, if you wanted to take it to that level. All right, it's not a requirement for this. All right. Have you given thought about what you're uh, going to do? I think of probably just a couple hard rock cafes. Okay, hard rock cafes. All right, that's, that's good. The thing is, is 
I, I want it to be beyond the trivial. I want you to do at least a few different cases, not just you know one case, and do as much as you can as far as as changing the page um, based on the location. So it sounds like you have a good start on that. Uh, again, you know, there's there's a lot of things that you could do. Again, do keep in mind that this is. Um, this is the server side geolocation, and it is not very fine tuned. It's based on the IP address, which doesn't tell you precisely where the user is, but gives you an approximate location. So, what you guys picked is pretty appropriate. In other words, if you were here, it wouldn't matter if, it, if, it, if we were in Lorraine, for example, and it thought we were in Illyria. The tourist attractions in this area are the same for a Lorraine versus Illyria, so even though it doesn't have that pinpointed down. Now, when, you get, when we get to client side, we can do better than that. If you're giving maps to, uh, to, to a student to find their way on campus, then it matters if your location puts you in Illyria instead of Lorraine, right? Because then, you know, you're totally off. So then that would require the client side GPS-based location. The good thing about this is that, and, and I don't want to say this in a sinister way, but this isn't something you have to ask the client for permission. You get the client's IP address as part of the request. And therefore, with the other, with the client side, you have to ask the user, do you want, you know, do you want uh, to, to uh, reveal your location? to uh, the server, which makes sense in a way, you know. It, it's no big deal for Google to know that I'm in Illyria, all right, but it probably is a big deal to have a program that can track precisely where exactly I am, <laughs> all right. And if it's going to do that, then I at least want to know about it first. And then I can decide, hey, I'm on LC's website. They're not a sinister organization. I want to find my way to the library. Yes, I will give permission. Or if I went to another website and it's like, gee, I don't know why this website would care about my location. Hmm, I'm going to say no and I'm going to decline uh, that. Starting next week, we will likely get on the um, on the um, client side location. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that you can pair this geo plugin with other sorts of plugins. Now, it sounds like you folks already have an idea of how to do that, but you could, for example, create a map that shows, um, you know, uh, or you could, you could possibly hook to the, to the Google mapping service to display a map. That could be a way of making it um, location sensitive. Or you could, like I did, hook to the Yahoo News service and pull headlines for that location and, and, and all that. So once you have that location, you can go to other plugins. It is a good skill to know how to use and work with these services, right? That way you don't have to reinvent the wheel. It provides you a framework similar to um, what you might have in ASP.NET or Android, right? You have a framework for doing your geolocation so you don't have, you're not responsible for writing all the low-level code. All right. Any questions about this in general terms about what you're required to do? If I'm not mistaken, you're just making one page. You don't have to make a desktop and mobile version. You're certainly welcome to do that if you want to practice that. But it does need to be location dependent. All right. Let's go downstairs. Um, I will post this video just as a sort of a summary of what's required, um, and we'll go from there.